If you're walking or driving across a bridge that goes over the Titaboasi River at this time of year, you're likely to see this sight. 20, 30, 50, and sometimes even 100 ice fishermen out there just feet away from the flowing river current, and they are catching walleye. Some dandy walleye, big walleye, right here from the Titabawasi River system flowing into Saginaw Bay. Some excellent walleye fishing, some perch fishing, too, that we did. Well, I'm going to take you along, so join me, Fred Trost. It's Thursday night, time to go perch fishing on Michigan Outdoors. Well, here we go, Bob, ice fishing out on Saginaw Bay. This is one of the trips I enjoy taking the bronc out on the ice like this. I really do with, if you have four-wheel drive, chances of getting stuck are fairly slim. And with 16, 18 inches of ice, I'm not worried about it. No, and, and they have been driving on that ice for uh, two to three weeks anyway, and we were following some people that, uh, that uh, definitely knew their way around it. Of course, you had a few reservations about it. Well, anytime you go out on the ice, you, you, you want to make sure you're safe. And uh, I had less reservations following people that had done it for a couple mm -hmm. of weeks, though. Well, this, this, was, this is the way to go, I think, if you can take your car out on the ice, if it's thick enough, if it's safe, which right now after this warm weather, I doubt it. But this was, this was uh, shot just before we had all that melting. And of course, on, on an open bay like this, where the wind is whipping, it is extremely handy to have some type of protection. And an ice shanty is ideal. It protects you from all sides, and you can run a heater in here as well. And a portable shanty like this, this is really the berries, I well, think. Well, it's a simple shanty, too. Just with, with that canvas there, it allows you to take it anywhere. Of course, uh, half of the bottom of the shanty is a plywood board, and this half comes out because we're going to bore some holes in the ice and fish right in the shanty. If you have an old chainsaw, uh, you can cut a, a spearing type of hole in the ice, a big rectangle. But for perch fishing, all you need is some round holes, six or eight inches. And of course, you can't beat a power auger oh. for drilling those holes. But that ice was so thick that uh, if they got four or five more inches, they would have had to, had to get extensions on those power augers. Right. The, a lot of the anglers who fish Saginaw Bay all winter long do have extensions for their augers because the ice sometimes, it's, it's been recorded as, as thick as three feet. <laughs> Incredible. And it's about half that. Uh, thickness today, but we have the, the holes moved the shanty over the holes and now the heater. Hold your ears, guys. There we go. We got that going in the shanty. The gas bottle, of course, is kept on the outside. And Bob, this is where you literally hold up for the day. I sure did. That wind was kind of bitter and that was, a, that was the warmest, nicest place on the whole bay. Now, there were some folks out there who must have had plenty of long underwear who <laughs> didn't have uh, protection, and they were catching fish, that particular group was, and our little shanty town here uh, took quite a few. We have people who are, use their vehicles uh -huh. to either stay behind or like this fella, he gave me the idea, so I just, I got in the bronc and I uh, turned the motor on and got the heat going, and, and caught, you, I caught a little perch. And you caught the smallest perch of the day. I think I did, just about. <laughs> but I tell you, there were some, there were some nice ones taken, there is. although they were running fairly small. Now, the fishing, you know, goes back and forth, <laughs> and maybe two or three days out of the week it'll be hot, and it's hard to predict when it will. But uh, that is a nice perch. Good eating, and sometimes they get into the jumbos. That's what everybody's looking for, the 12, 14 inchers. These fellas here have a tip-up set on Saginaw Bay. Kind of unusual we'll have to find out what they're fishing for. Got a pretty good mess of perch. Two of you's in here, huh? Whoa, this is really nice. Yeah, we're getting a few. What, what are you heating? What are you heating in that stove? Uh, wood, oak. Just wood? Okay, yeah. yeah, it smells different than in the gas out here when you're behind a shanty. Yeah. Holy cow, have you guys got little minnows? Look at these, OJ. Yeah, well, we're doing double Got, Double hooking them? Yeah, I got a Swedish pimp on the bottom, and then up about six inches, I got a number, about a number, well, what would it be? Probably a number six hook. Okay. And you've been doing, oh, you got one now? Nope. Yep, nope. nope. Yep, nope. <laughs> There's a lot of yep, nope out here. <laughs> let's see that rig that you have. Well, let's Pull it out basically here. Basically, what we're doing, if you can get her separated there, I put a Swedish pimp on the bottom, and uh -huh. then. Uh, and then a hook out of, uh, about a number eight, there. number ten hook? Yeah, or what, that about six, isn't it? Somewhere Something like that. Yeah. And you just jig it. Just jig it. 
It seems to be doing pretty good for us. Yeah, well, you got, uh, oh, it looks like maybe 30 or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fred, we've, yeah. Uh, we've been doing good for the last two weeks. Real good out here. There we go. Oh, we got one coming here. Oh, Jay? Should I make way? Is it a huge one? No, just a little wimp. A little one? <laughs> oh, hey, there's one. <laughs> ah. You're not keeping that size, are you? No, no. A bit too small to fillet. Yeah. We've been here a half hour ago, hey? <laughs> well, now, what's the story here, Brad? Is your dad getting all of the big ones? Yeah. Most of them? Yeah. I never catch nothing too big. Is that right? <laughs> he, always get, he always beats me. Why is that, Pop? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he holds his mouth right. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, he's yawning. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he sleeps a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got, oh you got one, Brad? Yeah. Well, OK. That's the same Let's size. see. Show, it out, show us the, everybody wants know. to see. Now, that's a little bigger. A little bit. That's <laughs> bigger than Pop's. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> and he threw it back. Have Brad and Bernie Hebert, father and son team, great way to spend the day. And they really did load up on the perch. But you know the technique, Bob, and it was interesting. I saw this in Tom Opry's column. Mm -hmm. I think it was last week. Jiggle the bait a little bit, jiggle the lure, and then let it set because that's when the perch hit, when it's sitting, and then give it another jiggle. But don't be moving that bait too much. Oh, I think we, we found that out. We had to kind of hold that bait steady and let them come up and take it. Come on. Oh, good. Did I lose the line there? Oh, he's over in my hole. Come on. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I thought he was going to be a huge one. That's its great expectations. Well, you always have big expectations, Bob, uh, for these perch. A lot of them are small, but uh, here's Gail. Gail Bedore from uh, Gail's Bait and Tackle up at Quantica. He's huh? got the touch. Hey, this isn't too bad. I'm still... Still sticking it out here to the bitter end, uh, seeing if I can get one more, but dump them out there. We got some nice ones. They got a few more left in there. Do they? Yeah. Well, that's a heck of a mess. Well, I don't know. They were, they were hitting today. But yeah, we got some nice ones there. Bob made a good mess of fish. The day when, it, when you're done fishing, uh, the nice thing about these portable shanties is you can take them right down. And all kinds of shanties are out there. Uh, this is a homemade one on a snowmobile sled. There's a lot of folks who go out there, fellas, who go by themselves. Mm -hmm. And they can put these up. They have their heater, their gas bottle, auger on the front, snowmobile, even a CB radio, the whole works. They spend all day out there like, uh, like you would in a deer blind opening day or whatever. Right, a lot of fun. You know, we had to head back. Now, with the Bronco across the ice, and sometimes uh, in the winter you do encounter problems on Saginaw Bay, this is the classic right here, the pressure crack. Sometimes pressure cracks open up, it's caused from the wave action out in the open water in the bay. Here we have a pressure crack that had been opened and then closed, causing the ice to jam up. A potentially dangerous situation, of course, if that whole ice flow mm -hmm. breaks off. We even had some water. This wasn't open water right here, but it's water that had come up during the day through the ice. But that was not there in the morning when we crossed over it. No, it sure wasn't. Adds a little adventure. Well, you have to just find a safe place to cross. Uh, be forever on the lookout for those pressure cracks. Now, people were probably going to get some letters on this. We're nuts for doing this and showing it on TV. But here's, but look at this, mm -hmm. Bob. This is fishing on the Tetabawasi River where they're really slamming the walleye. And for the faint-hearted, this type of fishing isn't suitable either, but uh, it's a good way to catch walleye, and the ice is thick enough on the side of the river where the current isn't so stiff. Everything I've been told, Ian Scott, is that uh, the fishing picks up about 5 o'clock. Well, and here you are leaving. Uh, Got to go home for supper. Oh, do you? <laughs> you having walleye for supper? Uh, no, not tonight, tomorrow night. Okay, well, you're, you're about three short of your limit here today. But these are nice walleye. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what, what, how do you catch them? Uh, jigging with a jig and with a minnow on it. Well, Just let's see which minnow. one. You have two rigs here, I see. This is the one that uh, caught these two? Right. That's, uh, Looks like a little Cleo little or something. little Cleo. Oh, that's what it is. A little blue and white Cleo. And uh, you put a minnow on it and uh, split shot to hold it down. I see, because there's quite a current in the Right, river. quite a current, yeah. Hmm. If you don't have no weight on it, well, just bellies out under the ice and you don't reach the fish. Now, how, how much line do you let out? Uh, approximately 10 foot. So not very far? No, no. And how do these walleye battle? Uh, they put up quite a fight in the current. Well, that gives them a little help. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> quite a little help. Now, have you have you caught walleye here quite a few times before? No, this is my first time here. No kidding? Right. Yeah. Okay, these are uh, nice walleye. How long have you been here? Uh, since uh, about two o'clock. So in three hours you picked up two walleye. Yeah, and I lost three. So. Oh, did you? Oh yeah. How come? <laughs> well, <laughs> you don't catch them all. <laughs> How are the other people doing? Uh, every once in a while a guy gets one. Morning and evening are best for walleye. Perch seem to do best during the daylight hours, a perfect combination for a Saginaw Bay ice fishing day in Michigan outdoors. What kind of fish is this? You recognize it? Well, Judy Hemeter from Saginaw caught it and she didn't even know exactly what it was. She put down bowfin on her fishing awards entry form, but it's a burbot, a freshwater codfish, really. It's smooth, mottled skin, and rounded tail, a barbel on its chin, those are all giveaways. She caught it January 2nd on a tip-up in Lake Huron off Tawas. It's 32 inches long, nine and a half pounds. Burbot move into shallow water for their winter spawning runs, and they are excellent eating, by the way. Now, what about this fish? Silvery gray scales, forked tail, a small mouth. It's a trophy lake whitefish caught on February 2nd in Saginaw Bay by Michael Steve of Caucallan. He was probably fishing for perch with the minnow. Mike's trophy was 29 inches long, nearly nine pounds. Now this is easy to identify even in black and white. It's shaped like a muskie, but we know it's a pike from its whitish bean shaped spots. It's a huge northern too, 26 pounds, 46 inches long. This pike was speared on Croton Pond near Nuego by Les Wolford from Jenison. Now Ken Floyd from Columbiaville has an unusual story to go along with his first master angler catch. It's a black crappie. Ken was dangling a sucker minnow under a tip-up in a lake in Lapeer County. He was fishing for pike, that's his favorite fish to catch. Well, the flag went up and this two pound, five ounce crappie stripped all the line from the tip-up and put up a 15 minute battle. That's an unusual tip-up catch and battle story for 14 year old Ken Floyd, but he made the trophy book. And so did Tom Raftery from Garden City. A 44 and a half inch northern pike on a tip-up from a lake in Oceana County Tom says holding up this 20-pounder isn't easy. The pike is on its way to the taxidermist, and young Tom Rafferty is on his way to fame as our Michigan Outdoors Trophy Angler of the Week. There's hardly any time of year that brings out more concern about safety and which, than ice fishing season, <laughs> thin ice, which is probably why we have these letters right now. In fact, Bob. we've got a, le a letter that we ought to call a long distance letter from Doug Morrison of Garibaldi Highlands, get this Fred, British Columbia. Oh. He says, I expect that you have had camera flare problems with Blaze or Hunter Orange on your show and consequently have not always modeled good practice of your people wearing it at all times in the field. I believe the answer is for you to make up a few dozen vests and hats in a shade of regular non-blaze orange that looks like blaze orange on camera. Then every time you are on camera, have everyone dress in the special gear so you can appear to be modeling proper practice, which is what's important considering your large audience. On a similar note, I think you should have your people wearing life jackets more of the time while wading deep streams, children on the riverbanks, etc. I've thought about this question a lot, Doug, that you asked, and, and I guess the key to it is, is where you said, wear the special gear. It is special gear. Blaze orange is not something that is really attractive. It's for safety only. Uh, the big life jackets, the kind that you are looking for, because you don't see the ones that we slip underneath our jackets, uh, those, the foam type that uh, are designed to be attractive. You don't see those. But these types of things are special gear that we wear when it's appropriate. And you see us wear that on the show when we're out in the field hunting or when we're in a dangerous situation in a boat. Otherwise, if it isn't necessary, we use our judgment. And like I hope you do and all of our viewers, use your judgment when it comes to these questions when you should and shouldn't, shouldn't wear them. But you certainly don't have to wear them all the time. I think that's the answer to that, a, when it's appropriate. Good judgment and error safely. Right. <laughs> okay, another question too, Fred, from John Stance. He writes, while hunting with a handgun in Michigan, do you have to leave one chamber empty or can you hunt with a full six shots? Hey, John, you're talking about a revolver here. The answer is no, the law does not require that you leave a chamber empty. And what you're talking about, I'll explain to the audience here, I, I have spent shells, empty shells, in the gun that I use, the revolver I use, and you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five shells in the uh, cylinder, 
one empty. Now, I still hunt this way, even though the law does not require it, and it isn't necessary for safety, but the reason this came about is you put the dead uh, cylinder right below the hammer, and then the old guns used to be able to fire if they were bumped like that. The new ones can't. This one can't. Most new ones can't. It's a good habit to get into. You can't be too safe when it comes to guns. So I guess that's the answer to that. You don't have to, but it's a good idea, good practice to get into. Now that we're off the hot seat, our questions are done. Here's your question, folks, in the Outdoor Quiz. Over the past century, which population has expanded faster, humans or the white-tailed deer? In the past 100 years, the U.S. population has increased four times, while the white-tailed deer population increased by 24 times, from about 500,000 in 1880 to over 12 million today. If ice fishing on half-frozen rivers in February doesn't ring your chimes, maybe some of our summertime activities at Houghton Lake at our outdoor fair will suit you better. Besides the good fishing in Houghton Lake the last weekend in June, we'll have lots of hunting, fishing, and shooting sports activities for you to watch and participate in at the outdoor fair. The duck hunting demonstrations at the Limberlost Dock are always a popular attraction. Members of the Michigan Duck Hunters Association explain all facets of duck hunting. They show how they train their dogs, set decoys, and of course they'll be holding our nationally sanctioned duck and goose calling championship at the fair this year. But the dogs always steal the show, and this year we'll have more breeds, retrievers, setters, and pointers than we've had before, demonstrations. Everybody loves to watch good hunting dogs in action. And if you really want to experience a duck hunting simulation, try the layout boat. Say pull when you're ready. Pull. The Michigan duck hunters can give you pointers on shotgun skills, and you can take a couple shots. A little bit longer on the bird, and then squeeze your trigger off. Safety's on. Pull. Perfect hit. See, with a little instruction, it isn't so difficult. Thousands of people are able to put shotguns, handguns, and muzzle loaders in their hands for the first time and squeeze off a round, thanks to the efforts of members of the Duck Hunters Association chapters around the state, especially Houghton Lake's Deadstream chapter. Muzzle loaders from clubs all over Michigan give people a chance to put a muzzle loader in their hand, and handgun silhouette shooters do too. Hold your gun down, bring it up to the target. Don't cowboy, don't go up like this, because you might shoot over the woods. We don't know what's over the woods. We're Tim safe. Farragut is a member of the Great Lakes Handgun Metallic Silhouette Association, and he's one of the instructors who introduces a lot of people to their first experience with a big bore handgun. Safety is stressed, and all of this shooting is done under strict, but I assure you, very friendly supervision. As a magnum bullet, I've got them loaded down for guys like you and some ladies that want to shoot them and don't want to shoot the heavy guns. All right, get right up here and relax. I'm gonna load the gun up for you. Just aim at that big ram down there. Now remember, hold the gun down, cock the gun, bring it up to your target, and then shoot. Shooting sports, hunting, fishing, seminars, exhibits, all at the outdoor fair. One of the top outdoor events of the year coming up on our outdoor calendar. I don't know if this is the best part of ice fishing, but it's certainly one of the big joys, and that's the walleye that Bob got when we were ice fishing in the Titabawassi two weeks ago. Yeah, it was fun, and it tastes good, too. Oh, it is And a little bluegill good. tossed in here doesn't hurt that we've that we've caught. You can't beat that, the taste of those, either one of those. Save that extra bluegill for me, too. <laughs> yeah. But why put the breading on it, Kathy? Well, it does give it a little bit of extra coating. You've got flour, salt, this is a tangy batter, water, and vinegar, and baking soda. And it, it's surprising what the baking soda does in this recipe. It sounds like a uh, Mr. Wizard science project <laughs> of some sort. Right, it does sound like it's going to blow up. Okay. Just going to stir this so most of the lumps are out, and it doesn't take very long at all. And the vinegar. Now, there's where you get your tangy taste. It almost tastes like lemon mm -hmm. is in it, the batter. It does. It doesn't taste like, like vinegar, Just, no. but you can taste it in mm -hmm. the breading. Yep. Well, this what? is sort of breading. It's a, it's a coating. Yes. And 
Right, and it, it's very thin. It, now here's, watch this, it just thickens right out. I remember the first time we did this. <laughs> the look on like your face, gonna, Kathy. Yeah, we didn't like know. going to go right out of the bowl. When this was going to stop. Right, and it does. It, but you want to put the fish in very soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it will kill it right away. And there's some of that walleye. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, you can't beat the taste of that. And it doesn't take long. No just spices. None. No seasoning, salt. Well, just, just a little bit of just salt a bit was of in salt. there. But no pepper, no, nothing else. And there it is in the frying pan, and here we have it, walleye and bluegill. Unfortunately, I guess we might as well say that this yes. batch right here was not cooked in a cast iron skillet. It was cooked in the metal Aluminum, type of yes. skillet. It does make a difference. Which we won't use again. <laughs> Ever. Some of the breading stuck to the pan, but there's still enough left that... Uh, well, Bob just crunched it down. I heard him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the recipe all makes sense, though. When you go to some place good that, that serves uh, fried fish or cod or whatever, a good place, they always have malt vinegar or That's whatever right. to add to it. That's right. Or lemon. So, you know, why wouldn't it work? Add it right to the recipe. That's, That's really right. good. A tasty, tasty batter. Beer batter is good, mm -hmm. but a lot of people who try this are surprised they even prefer this. Mm -hmm. Right. The it's beer just batter. a little bit it's different. A little Mind bit if different I finish flavor. the bluegill on my finger? No, go ahead. And then, <laughs> then, then you can dig into this right here, Bob, but in just a minute... Well, that gives them a little help. Oh, yeah, quite a little help. Now, have you have you caught walleye here quite a few times before? No, this is my first time here. No kidding? Right. So in three hours, you picked up two walleye. Yeah, and I lost three. So. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. How come? Well, <laughs> you don't catch them all. <laughs> How are the other people doing? Uh, every once in a while, a guy gets one. 